Good morning, guys. I hope you're all doing well today. Coming at you with the next excerpt of my first novel, Black and White Odyssey of Eden, continuing where I left off on my last excerpt. So let's go ahead and have right at, uh, at this. What? What did he say? The scientist, as he had so many times before, poured over this singular scene in an endless history of infinite iterations and probabilities. This one hinge upon which seemingly the fate of the entire world, the whole of humanity, no, the whole of the universe and all of existence, rested. The scientist, who for so long remained listless and bland, heard an utterance, a mystical, magical incantation that would change everything, that would lead down a path that was new. It was original and was the light to his feet he prayed for all his life was actually there. Desperately, emotionally, the scientist groped at the knobs of the console as he rewound the scene, ears tortured ever so closely, not to miss a singular syllable. No. No more pain. I won't do this. I can't do this. No more. No more. The words trickled once more through the holographic scene, serenading the scientist as he began to tremble in fear, excitement, and elation. He dare not make any further uh, interaction with the scene, lest he destroy what Jared had allowed to be saved. Finally. The scientist, now fully terrified, dialed more knobs that muted him entirely from any perception of Jared, whether through inception from unconscious thought or otherwise. Then, like a trumpet loud enough to shatter glass, and indeed it caused the console monitors to shake violently, the scientist bellowed. He bellowed with greater force and paroxysm than any man before him could ever naturally have fueled by an eternity of seeming futility and pain behind him. Yes! 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 To have known that this was worth it, that victory was to be had, but for 1.8 million years of effort in the scientist's relative linear time, never to know when or how it would be attained, meant this emotional climax he felt was a pathway. However dark, however narrow and feeble, that pathway was to salvation. It existed, and now he knew. He finally found it. He finally witnessed it, had the evidence, the proof. To him, no battle was more worth fighting than this one, the hinge that would determine the shape of all futures, the hinge that would open the door to any living future at all. The sheer magnitude and combination of emotions that the scientist felt in that moment left him frozen in place, eyes wide, voluminous bellows continuing to pour from his mouth for what felt like was only a moment. In reality, within the chamber, which itself experienced a vastly increased dilation of time, his relative form echoed for only a mere handful of seconds. And with rapid breaths and sweat beating on his brow, he fidgeted with yet more of the controls. That is, after he could finally muster the courage to do so, still horrified at the possibility breaking what had just been built, gazing intently at the blazing hologram of the scene. As he did this, the holographic image of the scene projected upon the whole of the chamber in which he resided seemed to develop an outline about one of the barely visible walls, what appeared to be the outline of a doorway. As it appeared, a green light indicating that it was ready to be used suddenly shined above its topmost threshold, and the scientist stumbled through it, knees buckling from adrenaline. He felt weightless, and his legs themselves numb, yet clumsy and massive. Thomas, from the other side of the door, was talking to a technician, gathering information on his next assignment, when suddenly he noticed the door appear from the corner of his eye, 
catching him off guard. That's this excerpt. I'll come at you with the next one later. Love y'all. Peace.